Hello, my name is Kathy Yielding, and I'm going to talk to you today about hyperlipidemia and its treatments. Hyperlipidemia is characterized by elevated levels of fat in your blood, which is determined by a patient's total cholesterol, fasting cholesterol level. A total cholesterol level above 200, as well as other factors in a lipid panel, including triglycerides, LDL cholesterol, and HDL cholesterol, is concerning as it is a known contributor to cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in the United States. Everyone needs cholesterol in their body to produce healthy cells, but too much cholesterol can cause your arteries to harden and limits the amount of oxygen-rich blood to your body. This can lead to a heart attack or stroke, so management of hyperlipidemia is critical to decrease your risk for cardiovascular disease. There are several types of medications used to manage hyperlipidemia. One type is HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors, also known as statins. Statins reduce the amount of cholesterol in the blood by inhibiting cholesterol and the HMG-CoA reductase synthesis, which is done in the liver. Statins can increase your liver enzymes, so they should be monitored closely when starting treatment. When statins are taken with colchicine or fibrate, serious side effects such as myopathy, including rhabdomyolysis, can occur. Using statins with niacin can have adverse effects on the skeletal muscle. Using statins with cyclosporin, erythromycin, lopinavir, ritonavir, or rifampin can significantly increase the effects of the statin. Statins may also increase the effects of warfarin. Statins are the preferred first-line treatment for hyperlipidemia. They all have shown similar cholesterol-lowering effects with a torvastatin or rosuvastatin showing a bit better efficacy. For this reason, patients with a genetic component to their hyperlipidemia might have a better response to one of these two medications. Fibrates are also used to treat hyperlipidemia. They are derivatives of fibric acid used to lower serum triglycerides and increase HDL or the good cholesterol levels. Peroxisome proliferator activated receptors or PPARs regulate lip lipid metabolism. Fibrates bind to these receptors, activating peroxisome proliferator response elements that decrease triglyceride concentrations by increasing expression of lipoprotein lipase and decreasing A apolipoprotein C2 concentrations. Fibrates can cause some GI upset that usually decreases over time. They can lead to gallstone formation. Inflammation and weakness of muscles can occur while taking fibrates. Myopathy and rhabdomyolysis can occur in patients taking both fibrates and statins together. Fibrates can also increase the effects of warfarin. Patients with severe hepatic dysfunction, renal insufficiency, or with pre-existing gall, gallbladder disease should not take fibrates. Fibrates are not as effective as statins for lowering the LDL cholesterol, but they have a better effect on HDL cholesterol and are more effective for lowering triglyceride levels. There's a strong genetic component to hyperlipidemia. Your body may not be able to remove the fat from your blood properly, or your liver may overproduce cholesterol, causing your lipid levels to rise. Other non-modifiable risk factors include diabetes, hypothyroidism, and renal disease. Some modifiable risk factors include diet, obesity, sedentary lifestyle, smoking, and excessive alcohol intake. HIV can also lead to hyperlipidemia due to the side effects from some of the medications used to treat the infection. Management of hyperlipidemia has been shown to lower the risk of cardiovascular disease. When used correctly and consistently, along with dietary and lifestyle changes, hyperlipidemia can be managed and brought under control.